Greetings, cinephiles. Are you looking for a movie analysis podcast that stands above the rest? Then look no further than Collateral Cinema, the only movie podcast that matters. We analyze good movies, we analyze bad movies, and yes, we also analyze the in-betweens of the world of cinema. So if you like what you hear, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts. And yes, my friends, we are 420 friendly. So when you listen to us, smoke smoke it if you've you've got got it. it. And now... Here's a new episode of Collateral Gaming. The show starts right now. I'm Ashley Chancellor. And I'm Bo Maddox. And this is Collateral Gaming. Welcome to Collateral Gaming, the only video game podcast that matters, where we focus on good games, bad games, and everything else in between in the world of gaming. We are podcasting straight from somewhere in Texas, and yes, my friends, we are a 420-friendly podcast, so whatever you have, smoke it if you've got it, my friends. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. (laughs) So this (laughs) this is our second bad game review of the season. Uh, Normally, we would have been doing both of these in April, but here we are. Um, Actually, both of the picks from this season are carryovers from last season that we didn't get to. So uh, today we are talking about E.T., the extraterrestrial, the 1982 Atari game. And interestingly enough, I think they were going to try to do a coin-op version of this game, which would have been interesting, but, well, I mean... History did not uh, bear that. So, you know. No, no, it did not. You know, what's funny is the question keeps popping up to my head. You know, is this truly the worst video game of all time? No, no, not 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 even. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and say it up front. I don't think it's the worst game of all time. It is a bad game. Don't get me wrong. But considering its history, <laughs> it's actually more competent than I would have expected, which, which we'll get into, you know, like the whole development history behind this thing. But I think that, uh, yeah, the, the, this game just became so infamous and became such a phenomenon that it's the game that everybody thinks of when you think of worst video game of all time. Almost to the point where it's kind of an old gaming meme, kind of, you know? I mean, even uh, along with the whole uh, urban legend, which was confirmed that uh, there were uh, several uh, carts uh, buried out in the uh, New Mexico desert, you know, which we'll get into here in a little bit, but that was confirmed. That was confirmed. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Fucking A. Um, Actually, and that whole thing was the plot uh, of the Angry Video Game Nerd movie, um, which I just watched today. And and I got to say, like, that whole movie is is pretty much just an extended review of (laughs) E.T. And you know what? I mean, that's exactly what I would have expected James Rolfe to do there because, I mean, I don't think there's any other way you could do an Angry Video Game Nerd episode but that. You know, kind of like how uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force colon movie film for theaters is very much just an extended Aqua Teen episode. But it actually works because they, you know, made it work within the world of that that whole uh, movie with, you know. And everything, so it, it makes sense that that's exactly what uh, the AVGN movie would be. But last night I didn't necessarily watch that, but I watched the review that's at the end of that movie, which yeah. is pretty much the official. That's the official episode on the on the Cinemassacre website when it comes to uh, when when it comes to the actual review. And I mean, his his take is even is just like, no, this isn't that bad. And I forget what YouTuber it was that I was watching that uh, played that played through this. Uh, he even said that really what it was. And both him and James pretty much said like these kids just didn't read the instruction manuals. Yeah, and what's funny is 
you know, if you're going to, again, don't get me wrong, this is a bad game, but if you're going to criticize it, I just feel like that criticism isn't warranted when there were Atari games that came out that were successful, that were praised, that also required you to read the instruction manual. So, like, I feel like that's not really a valid criticism. I mean, that, it, it wasn't that kind of almost standard operating procedure those days for a lot of games? Kind of, sort of, but the thing that you have to understand about games at that time is, and, and once again, this is something that James Rolfe will bring up, it's that, I mean, Atari games at that time were very, they, they, they weren't necessarily, you know, simplistic. They were just simple to get into, you know? You, you had a very, very direct type of gameplay there. You know, some like, say, you know, Galaga or Space Invaders or something like that, you know? Where, I mean, it's very basic, you know? You're, you're, you're shooting aliens out of the sky as they're advancing on Earth and Space Invaders and everything, you know? But here, this was the first game that was almost kind of uh, a puzzle in unto itself, in a way. You know, it was... It, it was you can almost argue that it is a puzzle game at its core. Yes, yeah, and I feel, that that, feel like that's the way that it was approached. And, and when you look at it as a movie tie-in, I mean, really, there's not a whole lot for them to do, especially considering the limitations of the hardware and whatnot. Um, I feel that Howard Scott... Howard Scott Warshaw? Warshaw, yeah. I feel that uh, Howard Scott Warshaw really did the absolute best he could, especially considering the five-week time frame that this was developed. Like, holy shit. Yeah, this guy d not only developed uh, this game, also did uh, Yar's Revenge and the Indiana Jones game. Right. Incidentally, there's a couple of Easter eggs in E.T. where you can uh, unleash the characters from those games very briefly. But, I mean, he had much longer development times on those games, and those games are actually kind of seen as Atari classics. So just the fact that he was actually able to, to code this in five weeks and get it, you know, to a somewhat playable state is nothing short of miraculous. Yeah. So I, I think where it gets its infamy is that, you know, like Atari, you know, kind of had a deal, you know, uh, doing licensed Spielberg uh, tie-ins, you know, especially with the Raiders of the Lost Ark game and whatnot. And and, and Atari had built up a brand and, and people were hyped about this. Initially, this game sold very well because E.T. was one of the most phenomenal films of all time when it came out. It was it was a spectacle, and, and here's the video game. And then you got it, and you're just like, even if you were a kid, you were like, this fucking sucks. And if you were, if you were really young, you know, you didn't even read the instruction manual, maybe, so you're just, like, thrown into this, and there's no direction. It makes absolutely no sense uh, walking into it. Again, like you said, you know, you, you need to have some kind of guide or... Or, or video or something to show you because what you're doing in the game is you're moving around as E.T. Again, this is, this is just a very, very, very bland, like, what can we do with the concept of the film, right? And so you're just E.T., the ship comes down, and you've got to go find telephone parts. And the telephone parts are in, inside the pits, uh, so at first, yeah. you, you're trying to avoid the pits, and you're like, oh, fuck. And then the first time you get in one, you're like, how the fuck do I get out of here? Um, and then you figure out how to slowly rise out of the pit, and then you realize you're supposed to go in the pits. And then there's all these little symbols that are popping up, and if you, if you hit a button, you'll suddenly teleport somewhere else. And again, it actually takes some, some research in order to decipher what all of these symbols mean. Oh, okay, so I've got to come over here to this question mark, and that's going to show me that there's a telephone part in the area. Okay, okay, and this one means that I can use a Reese's Pieces to, to recover my energy. Oh, okay, and this yeah. is that one landing pad that's at that one spot in the entire game ra randomly. Um, and this is all randomized. So that's what E.T. is, is you're just wandering around and hitting the action button uh, whenever the little icon comes up. Yeah, there, there's definitely a rhyme and a reason to the gameplay. And li like we said earlier, if, if uh, the parents of these who bought these uh, games for their kids would have actually sat down with them with the instruction manual and actually kind of worked out how to play the game and everything, got these kids reading the instruction manuals, more than likely 
none of this would have really happened, you know? Well, I mean, in, in some ways, you, you, you kind of want to put this on the consumer this time, you know? It's like... In, in some it, ways. It, it wasn't... It, it wasn't really on Atari here. It, it was... I mean, their, their customers just, you know... But... But, you know, on top of that, it's not like people would have had any inclination that all of that would have been in the uh, in the instruction manual. And, and it's not like we would have had, at that time, strategy guides. You know, those were at least another decade or so away. Yeah. And, and obviously, you know, we didn't have uh, playthrough videos on, or walkthroughs that you can find on uh, on the Internet. So, I mean, it's it's kind of mystifying how... You know, people it came with all the materials that you needed to play this game. I mean, the the manual itself is practically a a, a strategy guide for for the game in its own right. So it's like it was kind of on the players, on the kids, for not actually reading on how to play the game. Well, in some ways, though, because even though once you understand the game, it's it's it, it still sucks balls. I mean. I I, pl- yeah. I I played it. I still have not beaten this game, and you can beat this game in like two minutes flat. I've seen it done. Um, uh huh. Yeah. I've not done so because it is so frustratingly difficult. Yes, it's great once you actually figure out the game, but the controls uh, do not handle well. Uh, you've got these guys that are constantly coming after you. Like I, I don't feel that this was play tested. And again, that goes back to the short development time. There, there probably wasn't enough time to play test it because it's like this thing is nearly impossible. Um, you have it, one dude who'll collect all your telephone parts, and you have the other dude who puts you in jail. Uh, and, and it's all just so disorienting too because the screens don't really make a lot of sense. I think it's actually supposed to be like a cube or something. It's yeah, it's it's pretty much uh, sides like all the sides of a cube, you know, and you have to kind of think of it in that configuration. But also, there's the whole gameplay thing with uh, the kid Timmy, you know. Apparently, and and I, I think that he gives you extra, or or he'll give you a piece of the phone if you have enough Reese's pieces or something like that. I believe. Yeah, but um, wait, I don't think yeah. his name was Timmy. I I forget his name. It's been years since I watched ET, dude. Me too, uh, Elliot. <laughs> Elliot, okay. Yeah, Elliot's Elliot's the uh the name of that that's right. Yeah, yeah, that was something that that's not immediately obvious is you can pick up these little Reese's pieces. You would never know cuz they're just little black pixels. But you you, uh-huh. you pick one of them up and then if you happen to land on a tile that allows you to eat Reese's pieces and there's nobody else on the screen, then you can eat a Reese's pieces. Um uh and also, Elliot will come revive you if you run out of energy, too. But yeah. I'm assuming you lose all your telephone parts. Also, sometimes I noticed that I would just lose telephone parts, and I wasn't sure why. Like, I'd, I'd have two, and then I'd look again, and I'd be down to one. So maybe it's maybe it's some kind of unknown glitch in the game. I mean, there's one glitch that is known. I mean, apparently, if you uh, go to the... Uh, alien to to the spaceship landing zone and uh you summon timmy there before or elliot or whatever his name was if you summon the kid it will actually freeze up and crash the game yeah it's it's specifically when the it's specifically when the uh, actual spaceship comes down to pick up et yeah so uh, don't don't do that yeah and and, and no don't do that it it so you, what you've got to do is you've got to wander around aimlessly until you find this part of the, the part of the map that shows you a question mark, so to show you what pit to get the telephone part out of. You have to do that for multiple areas of the game while avoiding the guys that are trying to to put you in jail and take your telephone parts. And then you've got to wander around aimlessly and find the one spot on the board where you can phone home. Yeah. And then you got to go back to I, I think you have to go back to the original area and that's where the landing zone is every time. But everything else is randomized. And so yeah, it does add some replayability in the sense that you can play this over and over and over again. But I wonder how many kids actually ever pl- played and beat this. <laughs> Probably not a whole lot of people. I mean, I was on YouTube and I was w- trying to find playthroughs of this game and literally the longest play f- playthrough I could find was like maybe six and a half minutes. And somebody actually yeah. played through the whole game, found all the parts, avoided the FBI agent and the scientist and uh, phoned home and everything. 
Oh, and, and on top of this, you lose energy by walking. Yeah, that's the whole, that's the other issue there. It's like you, you kind of have to really uh, really prioritize where you're going in this game, you know? And you got to kind of really it's, it's know what you're like, doing. So pick one or the other. Do I need to scour every tile of this of this game? Or do you want there to be like a limit of how far I can walk? Because if you try to impose both of those on the game. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Jesus. But I guess that's the challenge. And there is something somewhat addicting about that challenge. It's like you really do want to conquer it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those things from people's childhood that, you know, just kind of is still there. And not a whole lot of people really beat it. You know, and and and, and that's and that's amazing. It's it, and and you can beat the damn game if you know what you're doing in less than a few minutes. It it it, it boggles the mind. You know, you can if you know what you're doing and and you and you've got enough enough skills and and enough patience. Yeah, because you've really got to learn this game and learn how to like. Because even just getting out of those fucking pits can be a fucking nightmare sometimes. Like you get stuck in a pit and and I swear to God you're like trying to get out of it like five times in a row <laughs> uh, before you because every time you you get back up onto the overworld it, you immediately touch a pixel of the pit or you know and it, and it, and it sends you right back down it it, it, is, it is so frustrating. Also. At, 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 at what point in the movie did E.T. ever levitate? Did that happen? Because I don't remember I'm that happening. pretty sure that never happened, you know? <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, I know that there's a deleted scene in the movie where uh, E.T. Uh, scares the mom in her uh, bedroom uh, before she knows that uh, E.T. is there in the house, and uh, that, that's lost media now. But, I mean, no, I don't, I don't recall any levitating. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't recall that either. Nor, nor, it's been nor, years since I've seen the movie, but... Yeah, nor have I ever heard of any de deleted scenes of any levitations, so... But, I mean, hey, it, it came out the same year the movie did, so... Yeah. I don't know. They had five weeks to develop this, though, so it would have been after the movie was out, right? Yeah, a little while after it was out, and... Uh, I mean, I guess they really wanted it out before the holiday season that year, so yeah, they th that's Which, how you got that uh, five week development period. So, and again, I mean, that's really the, what's to blame here. That that's why this game sucks. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you know, like I said before, I mean, I complained about it because it's 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 a bad fucking game, but it's surprisingly competent for being a game that was developed in five weeks. I mean. And and it and and surprisingly complex. I mean, a lot of the frustration that's aimed at this game isn't all just bad level design or bad controls. It, it's just you know, again, like you said, uh, uh, not all of it, but a huge portion of it is just understanding the game. Yes, and and that is on the players. Absolutely, yeah. So you know, that's that that that's where you know that starts to become less of a criticism of of, of a valid criticism because. You know, and again, there were other games that were excused for that. That was like, okay, like we understood. Maybe that's just not what you would have expected out of E.T. Maybe that's where there was the, the, the disconnect because like E.T. does seem like a kid-friendly game that a kid should just be able to jump in and play, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, th th this is almost like, you know, I, mean, I don't know what's a good uh, analogy here. I would say almost like uh, trying to figure out a Rubik's Cube for the first time, you know, whenever you first see one as a kid and everything, you know. I'd imagine it'd be kind of like that, you know. Yeah, it, 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 it's an odd match for, for the film, you know, like to kind of do this kind of like puzzle type game, I guess. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the idea of the puzzle game isn't inherently bad. I mean, I think like modernized with some quality of life improvements you could turn something out of this that was that was actually pretty cool um but but yeah it, it it's it, it's really it's it's the combination of it being just like more complex than you would have ever thought it needed to be and not realizing how complex it is you just have absolutely no idea what's going on it's the combination of that plus just the bad execution the the, the fact that there was just so little time to develop and play test this thing to make it actually viable as a product and and so you know the game quickly became infamous 
Um, and, and this isn't like plumbers don't wear ties where it just kind of faded into obscurity and people found it later. No, like this was hitting the papers at the time and would lead to Atari's bankruptcy and the video game crash of the 80s. Yeah, it, it, it was a death knell. It, it was a death knell for the industry at the time. And I mean, until Nintendo would come into the fray, I mean, video games were kind of written off for a little while there, you know, especially as far as Wall Street was concerned, you know. I mean, they were, they were just like, oh, why, why would we ever invest in this shit ever again, you know? Hello? Somebody out there? <laughs> It's the video game that lets you pretend you're E.T., running away from secret agents, falling into danger, finding a phone to call home, and discovering the best thing on Earth, a friend, E.T., only from Atari. Right. You know, like, you're already seeing in the papers, you know, things like, yeah, video games are already, like, a thing of the past, like, it was a passing fad, and, and I'm sure a lot of people felt that way, Um Thankfully, you know, we, or, or maybe not so thankfully, <laughs> considering the current state of uh, gamers. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 this has been allowed to continue. Mm -hmm. Hey, to S Silent, Silent Hill Nintendo Fog posting, others. we're looking at you. <laughs> 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 That's right, Silent Hill uh, Fog posting. Yeah, yeah. By the way, uh, we're totally locked in for doing Silent Hill 2 in October. Oh, fun. Oh, fun! Yeah, but that's, I, I, that's but don't you know that they made An, don't you know that they made Angela fat or something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, gamers. Uh, damn it! But, but anyway, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, this game single-handedly bankrupts Atari and causes the video game crash of the '80s. All right, and then there comes this urban legend, uh, aforementioned earlier, where. Uh, we uh, where where supposedly all these games were were filled in a landfill, and and when you when you think about it on its face for a second, you're like, well, that doesn't make any sense, you know? Like, wouldn't that have wouldn't, wouldn't they have just wanted to recycle the cartridges or something? Yeah. Like, <laughs> why would they fill a landfill with them? That that just makes no sense from a cost perspective. Yeah, that, that that's a point that Warshaw himself brought up. He was just like, look, I've heard about this for many years, and. I, I just wrote it off as kind of silly because I knew Atari's practices at the time. But as it turns out, 30 years later in 2014, the, uh, the landfill in question was excavated by actual archaeologists. And, you know, Warshaw was there. Uh, Nolan Bushnell, the original uh, founder of uh, Atari, was there. And the, the, uh, the author of Ready Player One was there as well. And sure enough, after a few hours of excavating, they hit pay dirt and they started pulling out cartridges. And the first few cartridges they were pulling up were ET cartridges. But yeah. the thing is, it wasn't f millions of them. It, w it was maybe uh, it was estimated to maybe be about seven hundred fifty thousand, and not all of those were ET games. There, they, it, there was also a lot of other uh, games that they had uh, that they dumped as well for various reasons. So, I mean, yeah, it was pretty much confirmed. It's like, yeah, there were definitely E.T. carts in that landfill in the New Mexico desert. Yeah, man, how crazy is that? I know, um, right? That that, that, that that actually turned out to be true. How did they figure out where to dig? I just guess just eyewitness accounts and... Part, part of that and uh, also, you know, they had actual archaeologists on hand to do like an actual proper scientific dig to get down into the different layers of trash, you know, because I mean, that, that, that's what, how landfills are, you know, it's pretty much just trash layered on trash layered on trash, you know. So, I mean, and, and I remember even back in the day reading a National Geographic about how, uh, modern day archaeologists at that time were starting to go and dig up artifacts in landfills that were pretty much cultural artifacts and everything that were just thrown away at one point so so th this is not unheard of in in archaeology i mean yeah I, I think that landfills do deserve a good excavation is think about it yeah you're, exactly. you're sitting on history there yeah. um if i if i recall correctly if, if i heard correctly I, I think one of the games 
uh, or the cartridges that was recovered from the the landfill excavation was, was memorialized and put in a museum. Uh huh. And they were actually play they some, they were playable too. I mean, they they somebody brought a twenty six hundred <laughs> with them and uh, played it right there at the landfill. No way. No. Yeah, it was playable. They found playable copies. That's fucking crazy. I know, right? That's fucking crazy. Oh man. Um. Yeah. The, the 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 uh the urban legend turned out to be true. You know what's funny is like, I think that that happened like right like the the same year that the angry video game nerd movie came out, which was about that. Yeah, exactly. It it was it was about the excavation, and if if I recall correctly, the actual review of ET happens. Uh, I I think though uh, they went to Nevada to Area Fifty One or something, maybe, or they may have been at the actual location. I don't really remember, but. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I like the uh, actual uh, review at the end of that. You know, it's just just a pretty standard review, and uh, he's just like, no, this game is not good, but it's not, it's it's not deserving of the legend that it has around it. Maybe. Yeah, no, and it was funny too because like watching the the whole movie, like they're setting this up as like the worst game of all time, and he's like, "No, I don't want to play this," and 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 you know, if I do this video, then all my fans are just gonna have to play this thing, and then you know, you, you get to the review at, at that in, during the credits, and it's just like, "Oh, actually, I, it it really isn't the worst game of all time." Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that's the ultimate punchline of that movie is that ultimately, and also, also honestly, this goes a little further back with AV. GN. I mean, he was uh, he was hinting about this like uh, several seasons before he even made the movie. You know, like he'd have little jokes yeah. where he'd pull the ET cartridge out and he would just revile in horror from it and everything. But you know, for for it to all culminate in a review that's pretty much just kind of like meh, it's kind of okay. It's like I, I think that's the funniest thing in the entire AVGN canon, honestly. Yeah, no, it, no, it really is. I think that that's hilarious. Because, you know, again, this game just built up so much infamy in the gaming community. It's one of the more well-known uh, bad games, you know. In fact, so so much so that we, we, we kind of went on, on that gag ourselves. Uh, early on for uh, an episode that was released on April Fool's Day, it was actually No Man's Sky. Uh, we actually marketed it as doing et oh so wow. <laughs> in, in a way we kind of had a gag ourselves with that of like you know are we ever gonna actually review this you know and then like last season we were supposed to and then we didn't yeah right so so, here, so it kind of <laughs> works out that way huh yeah here we are we finally played et and, and i i gotta agree with the nerd i mean it's it's bad. It's just, you know, I've definitely played shittier games. <laughs> yeah. It, it's not bad. It's just complicated. It's complicated for its time, you know, especially knowing what we know about Atari games at that, of that era. I'm going to call it bad because of the, the, the controls and whatnot, but um, the, the, the level design is not the issue so much as... Um, the handling of it and and just you know yeah yeah just just, just a f- combination of various factors but yeah it, as a concept you know like i said i, I could i could kind of see this format working um i i would just i would use it f- a different ip i would use something that's a little less marketable toward children which i know in general video games were marketed toward children anyway but yeah you know like you could have done something cool with this and and like a like a fucking spy movie tie-in or something. Yeah, you know I what could I mean? have done something like that. Yeah, but here's the interesting thing, though. Not too long ago, someone went into Unity and they remade a version of ET that is actually far more expanded. You know, it's it's not just the really? the, the, the cube levels. It's it's actually uh, got like you know forest levels. It's got like a, a level at uh, Elliot's house. It's got uh, and, and and he's like finding like Reese's pieces. He's finding uh, different like plants. He's it, it actually has different collectibles that he has to collect and everything. And not doesn't seem to have been a pit in sight as well. So yeah, it, it's actually got a little bit of a. Uh, more of a storyline you want I want to say to it you know but it was yeah. it was made recently and it was made in remade in unity it still has the old uh, atari graphics and everything but it's definitely uh, a more involved game than the actual 
1982 game. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Cuz like I I would like to see this kind of fully realized. Like what would they have done with enough development time? And I mean, like to be fair, you know, like, like I said this was released after the movie. If they'd started working on this before the movie came out cuz we know it doesn't follow the storyline of the movie anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> they, they they could have easily started on this way back. Absolutely. <laughs> they, they could have uh, had a good like 12 month development cycle before the movie even came out. But the thing about that is is though is that I don't think even Spielberg was really anticipating how huge of a hit ET became. I mean, I, yeah. I, I think even to this day, uh, a lot of younger uh, generations, they don't know how huge that fucking movie was, you know? I mean, it, 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 no. it made a m- massive amounts of money, uh, that, and it took the, the cinema world by storm, you know? Well, and see, I don't even have as, as big of a, a, of a story there. I mean, E.T. was just always a movie I saw as a kid. It was just always there. Yeah. I saw it all the time, and everybody knew about it, and everybody talked about it. But I wasn't aware until later of how big of a deal it was yeah. when it came out. And I was a kid when it came out, but I'm going to tell you the truth, man. I never really cared for the movie that much when I was a kid. I thought that it was just kind of all right, you know? I liked it. Um, looking back on it, I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out like what was so like groundbreaking. I mean, I guess I'd have to watch it as an adult. I haven't, I, I, I'm pretty sure I haven't watched this movie in, in several, several years. I I may have watched it as an, as an adult or at least parts of it, but it, it, it's been years. (laughs) It's literally been decades for me. I don't think I've even watched it since uh, I first saw it when I was a kid. That's how long it's been. Maybe I caught some uh, replays of it on TV, but I don't remember, honestly. Honestly, I remember uh, another movie that kind of, it was produced by Spielberg. I remember Poltergeist more than I remember E.T. And that wasn't even directed by him, so. No, but I do have a lot of fond memories of E.T. And I mean, I, there are very specific scenes because I saw it so many times as a kid. Yeah. I mean, I saw it a lot of times. So there's, there's, there's definitely a lot of it that sticks out in my mind. And I can recall specific things. And, and so to see something that I do have that connection with, that I do have fond memories of, just be bastardized is, uh, you know, it, it would fill me with anger if not for the fact that, like, I understand the history and I know why the game is shitty. And yeah, for what it's worth, it's really not all that shitty. <laughs> it really isn't. <laughs> you know, for, 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 for what went into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, I guess we'll go ahead and, and get into our final thoughts. This will be kind of a shorter episode. I mean... There, there really isn't a lot to talk about here. No, not at all. Like, like I said, the damn playthroughs on YouTube, the longest one was like six and a half minutes. I mean, there's, yeah. there's just not a whole lot to really dig into here other than the backstory, you know? Right. But um, final thoughts, Bo, on E.T. and the cultural impact that it's had. I mean, this was one of those gaming legends that I heard early on where I was just like, wow. It's like, I mean, I don't know if that's true, but maybe. And then having it proven to be true was really, really cool, you know, later on. But, I mean, as far as the game itself, it's just kind of there for me, you know. I mean, like I said, I didn't have much of a connection to E.T., even as a kid. when and, And I was a kid when the movie first came out in the 80s and everything, so... And I, I watched it on, on rewatches then. And, you know, that movie didn't do much for me. And this game probably wouldn't have done much for me either. You know, had, I, had we had this game, and we had an Atari 2600, but I don't remember us ever having E.T. But, I mean, if we would have had this game, I probably would have just been like, Mom, what the hell is this? <laughs> you know? Right. Well, there's a lot of games that, like, as a kid, you, you, you might give a pass. I mean, I could see some kid playing Superman 64 and just actually liking it, enjoying it, having a good time. I think Especially if it's a rental, you know? Yeah. And I think we, we may have brought that up in, in, in the review that, like, you know, or, or reviews of previous games that, like, you know, like, these games, when they came out when you were a kid, there was magic. But I know, like, if I had played this game as a kid, I would have been fucking pissed. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. I... I liked E.T. as a kid. I, I'm not going to say I loved it, but I liked it. I watched it many times over and enjoyed it every time. So, yeah, I, I, I definitely would have been disappointed to come across something like this. 
Um, and and I, I can understand the vitriol behind it. But that being said, I mean, even, even without the context, I, I feel like just since starting this podcast, I've, I've definitely played shittier games. So, uh-huh. no, I don't think it earns the moniker of worst game of all time. I do think it earns a special place in uh, gaming history, though. Absolutely. I, I think it, it, it represents something. And because, and, and again, you know, really, I think where this infamy comes was the backlash, the timing of it, the fact that it was such a high stakes project and something that was that was such a big deal and failed so spectacularly. And in many ways, I don't think that we would have gaming as we know it today were it not for E.T., the 1982 Atari game. Yes, it was that much of a paradigm shift. You know, I mean, especially for <laughs> for the industry, I mean, artistically speaking, for gaming developers and everything. And, you know, especially for the kids that were actually playing the games then, you know. And eventually, I mean, gamers, they wanted better and they got better. Although I don't think that nowadays they deserve it. But, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, E.T. is the quintessential bad game it's the one that everybody's heard about if you if you're a gamer of any kind you just you have the remotest knowledge of gaming and you think of a bad game it's pro you're probably going to think of this one unless you know you, you think of a personal bad game that you've played yeah um so you know that that that's kind of where it stands is like the face of this um, and and, and I, again, I think it, I think it represents something in, in, in important to gaming culture today. Absolutely. But um, yeah, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us feedback on your platform of choice. Uh, you could help us climb the ranks on Good Pods. Um, also, uh, check out our Patreon where we have uh, exclusive uh, video game commentaries, uh, and uh, Collateral Cinema has a Patreon as well. Bo, what is going on with Collateral Cinema? Well, we just released our season seven finale, Cloak and Dagger. That episode is out right now. Uh, we have a new T Public uh, merch store open for both podcasts now, for under Collateral Media Podcasts on T Public. So uh, we should have our affiliate link in the uh, show notes uh, below show in, notes. in this episode. And, uh, yeah, we, we have everything from shirts and hoodies to hats to even pillowcases and full-on tapestries and phone cases and all sorts of, uh, all, all sorts of goodies. So, yeah, it's like uh, go, go to our uh, affiliate link uh, to Tee Public in the show notes of, the, of this episode and all episodes uh, of the podcast moving forward. And, yeah, help us out financially by buying a shirt or a mug or some other uh, bit of swag. Yeah, we're getting the the merch finally set up. It's going to be good. Um, And, uh, yeah, Uh, as for what's coming up next on Collateral Gaming, uh, we should be doing our uh, two-part episode on the Great East Attorney Chronicles. So as soon as possible, uh, we should have part one out. Uh, and then uh, we'll move on to part two once Bo finishes uh, Great Ace Attorney 2. Yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty slow-going player when it comes to these games, you know, for some reason. But, man, I am enjoying this last case. I'm finally, I'm still in the investigation phase, but I think I'm finally getting to the, to the court phase now. So I should have it finished here pretty soon. Yeah. But on that note, also on Collateral Let's Play, uh, we just released our Altered Beast episode, and uh, we should be doing a playthrough of the original Phoenix Wright uh, trilogy, starting with the very first game here very soon. I'm hoping to get our friend and uh, co-host Robert Ortegon on that. I don't know. I mean, he's I, he thinks that all anime is just Yu-Gi-Oh or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or Dragon Ball Z. Or Dragon Ball Z, you know, but... But yeah, look for that coming out very soon. And I believe our next uh, Collateral Let's Play is going to be Splatterhouse. So be sure to check that out this coming Friday. And Collateral Let's Play Beat'em Up Fridays every Friday. Well, all righty then. I guess that's it. Um, Stick around for more content very soon. Uh, We are currently in the stages of planning Collateral Cinema and Collateral Gaming uh, new seasons, so that would be seasons eight and seven mm-hmm. of of them respectively. So 
Um, yeah, yeah, we are putting together our uh, schedules, our itineraries, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm even excited. It's been a good couple seasons for, uh, or a good season for for each of our podcasts. Absolutely, yeah. Th- this was a great season for our podcast. We finally hit fifteen thousand downloads, and next next season we should be hitting our one hundredth episode as well, which will be the Redux episode of the Room. So. Next season will be an extended 13-episode season just because of that. So look for that. Well, all righty then. Um, with all that being said, I've been Ashley Chancellor. And I've been Bo Maddox. And this has been Collateral Gaming. We are out. Out. Collateral Gaming is a collateral media podcast. All music and game clips are owned by the respective creators and are used for educational purposes only. Please don't sue us. We're poor.